the issue of the Ground Zero Mosque has engendered great anger as well as an enormous number of comments for and against. What we have here are two polarized points of view, those of the politically correct and sanctimonious leftists among the academic, clerical and political leaders of the USA contra a great number of the common men and women of America who elected them. As usual, I shall address this issue on the facts regarding the cult belief system of Muhammad and Islam. All our arguments become null and void because we have to look at this issue from the point of view of the Muslims and not our own to start with. After all, it was they who threw the gauntlet knowing full well that there will be a strong reaction. What those who support the building, who are not Muslims miss totally, is the fact that they know very little, if anything, about the cult belief system that they are so cavalierly supporting. Personally, I was neither surprised nor shocked that Barak sided with the Muslims. Please be aware that he never renounced his Islamic faith. Was he baptized into the Christian faith? If so, when, where, and by whom? Is it logical to accept that he was a member for almost 20 years of one of the most radical, anti-white, anti-American, anti-Semitic church without learning anything? He spent most of his early life as a Muslim. He loves to hear the call of the, for prayer by the Muaydin. He extols the virtues of an Islam that does not exist in reality. He speaks of the Holy Quran, which is as holy as Hitler's Mein Kampf. He spoke about Islam's great influence in the making of the USA. Can anyone find the name of any Muslim contributing anything of value to the USA in the last 230 years? Is Barack H. Obama so ignorant that he cannot even understand that the whole of the U.S. Constitution is based upon liberal Judeo-Christian traditions, that nothing from the depraved Sharia appears anywhere. I picked on Barack, this is his name, not Obama, because he is causing enormous damage to the great nation of the United States politically and economically. He was elected to bring the people together, but instead he is dividing them. Yes. I fully understand Barack's support for the mosque. Now let us look at the so-called liberal, politically correct media, academia, clergy and politicians. I can guarantee that not a single one of them has actually read, let alone studied Muhammad's Quran and Sunnah. Yet these Quran ignoramus people are telling the American public that Islam is a peaceful religion, that those who disapprove of the mosque are bigots or Islamophobes. They have arrogated for themselves the high moral ground, as if all other Americans are morally and intellectually inferior to them. Well, let me tell these creatures what I know of them. They are aiding, abetting and colluding with the very Mohammedan Muslims that want our and their destruction, who declare publicly in over 80 languages all over the world in their TV, their mosques, their newspapers, their schools, as well as in our democracies, that the sole objective of Muhammadan Islam as ordained by Muhammad's God Allah is to Islamize the whole of humanity. That is, to bring all 80% of humanity of what they call Ummat al-Kuffar, nation of infidels, all Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Zoroastrians, Jews, animists, pagans, agnostics, etc., to the abyss of Muhammadan Islam, a cult belief system that is hate-mongering, war-mongering, misogynist, racist, and ungodly. I would like now to teach those politically correct English language ignoramus so-called intellectuals that phobia from the Greek phobos means fear or morbid fear is an irrational intense and persistent fear of certain situations, activities, things, animals, or people. Arachnophobia is fear of spiders. 
Acrophobia is fear of heights. These are irrational fears. But based on all of our knowledge of Muhammad's cult belief system, fearing it is totally logical and rational. In fact, it would be actually irrational not to fear his cult. Let me now address the characteristics of the male followers of Muhammad. Irrespective of culture, ethnicity, race, color, tradition, or sect, almost all male Muhammadan Muslims exhibit the following characteristics. An obscene degree of hypocrisy, mendacity, misogyny, racism, and unwarranted arrogance, compounded with a pathological and depraved indifference to logic, facts, reality, sincerity, mercy, compassion, friendship, loyalty, and language. I have no doubt that some good-hearted but uninformed people will call me hate-mongering, racist, and more. Since I have proven every single one of these adjectives in over 780 chapters on my web and over 275 videos, all they need to do is to disprove me based on knowledge. Nonetheless, I shall point out to those in doubt only three verses from among thousands in Muhammad's Quran and Hadiths that are similar or worse. Al-Imran 3.118 O you who believe, take not into your intimacy those outside your religion, pagans, Jews, and Christians, they will not fail to corrupt you. Al-Ma'idah 5.51 O you who believe, take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends and protectors. They are but friends and protectors to each other. And he amongst you that turns to them for friendship is of them. Verily Allah guideth not a people unjust. Al-Tawbah 9.29 Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which had been forbidden by Allah and his apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, Islam, even if they are of the people of the book, Christians and Jews, until they pay the jizya, poll tax, with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. For those ignorant people among the followers of Muhammad and their supporters, who have not read, let alone studied Muhammad's Quran, this verse alone was and is a unilateral declaration of war by Muhammad 1400 years ago, not only against the Christians and Jews, but against all other human beings as well, who do not believe as he does. Throughout their history, the Muhammadan Muslims invariably converted many of the greatest cathedrals churches or synagogues into mosques as we are recognizing the Hajjah Sophia in Constantinople and others. Also, according to their creed, any territory conquered by the Arabs and Muslims becomes waqf, that is forever part of the land of Islam. What is hideous about all of this is the attitude of the American Muslims, who are claiming victimization and discrimination. Remember, I call them obscene hypocrites. Of course they are. How many churches are there in Saudi Arabia? Kuwait, Yemen, Qatar? Where, pray tell, is Barak's tolerant Islam? Are they not the ones who burn churches in Iraq, Nigeria, Egypt, Algeria, and others? Are not Muslims the ones who prohibit upon pain of death, having Bibles in many of their states? Let me now address the issue of loyalty. I have asserted on numerous occasions that any and all believing or fundamentalist Muhammadan Muslims in our democracies are potentially traitors in waiting, if not already in fact. This again sounds as if I'm brushing a whole group equally. I repeat what I said, believing or fundamentalist Muslims. Since they are believing or fundamentalist, they must abide by the dictates of Muhammad's Quran and Sunnah. By doing so, the USA becomes a territory of war or Dar al-Harb and its people are unbelieving infidels or kuffar. 
The American Constitution is man-made and hence against the will of Allah. The Muslims cannot abide by it. The politically correct will point out that there are peaceful Muslims. What they mean is that these Muslims are not suicide bombers. Well, my reply is not yet. The proof of the pudding is in eating it, the English would say. Action and only action tells the story. Question. Have the so-called peaceful Muslims ever demonstrated, either in the USA or in Europe, in the last 30 years of Islamic terror, shouting, not in our name? Did they do so after 9-11? After 7-7 in London? What about Fort Hood? Why not? They cannot claim that they are afraid in our democracies, can they? Afraid of whom? After all, thousands of them were very brave in violently demonstrating in the United States and all over Europe over the cartoons. Muhammad said two things that I totally agree with. On our seminal when discussing Islam. One, he said silence means consent. Two, he said war is deception. The Ground Zero Mosque is not going to be for religious and social purposes, but the breeding ground for more intolerance and betrayal. The Imam speaks nicely and is dressed in Western clothing. All these appearances are meaningless because they are part and parcel of Islamic subterfuge called taqiyya. Under this rule, a Muslim can drink wine and even eat pig's meat for as long as in his heart of hearts he is fulfilling Muhammad Quran's aim to subvert all others to Islam. How many times do the American people need to be massacred humiliated and raped before they wake up to the existential threat posed by Mohammedan Islam to the whole civilized world. It is not true that the American people or the Europeans or Indians or Chinese discriminate and hate Muslims. It is Muslims who hate and discriminate against all others for as long as they follow Muhammad's Quran and Sunnah. It is they who separate themselves from the very peoples and states that give them security, shelter, freedoms, etc. And in return, they do their worst to undermine the peoples and institutions of these countries. This I call treason. Maybe you listeners have another adjective.